Greetings! This is a computer designed in Norway in the first half of the 80s. It was practically commissioned by the Norwegian government of the time for use in schools, in particular in the educational sector. A little bit like the BBC Micro in the UK. And as with the BBC Micro, this computer was also available for the consumer market as a home computer or a business computer. Today we will have a good look at this machine, how to operate it, how it works, and I reckon it's a good idea to start with the external features. One of the first things you'll notice is the design of the case itself. It has this slope and the case is kind of lifted a little bit behind the keyboard. And speaking of the keyboard, you may notice the keyboard looks an awful lot like the old Tonberg keyboards. This is no coincidence, as some of the key people at Tiki Data came from Norsk Data. Norsk Data would usually use Tonberg terminals with their products. The keyboard layout itself is a standard QWERTY layout, of course with the Norwegian A, Ö and O characters as well. It also got a couple of extra keys, like break, a graphics toggle, endo, on the other side it got expand and delete, and it even got the help key. Moving up from the keyboard is the name tag, only later machines got one of these. And then it's time to look at the disk drives. Usually these machines came with one or two floppy disk drives, but on this particular machine one of them is replaced with a hard drive. This is an ST506 interface drive, which was common of the time, this one being 10 megabyte. Well, that was the front of the machine, let's have a look in the back. And here it is, with connectors for all the peripherals you can use with the Tiki 100. These are the connectors for graphics and sound. The first one over here is the antenna RF out, which is preferred with older television sets. The next one is the composite, for use with modern televisions and monitors. All of these are outputting a PAL video signal. Then comes the digital RGB, capable of showing 8 colors. It uses the same pinout as the display port on the BBC Micro. At last is the analog RGB, with all 256 colors the Tiki 100 can produce. This can give a very clear image using an RGB scarfed adapter. Then there is the audio out from the AY sound chip. And next to it is a trim pot to adjust the volume of the internal speaker. Moving on towards the other side. In the middle, you have the mains power inlet, a fuse and a power switch. Next to it is a label with a serial number. And like the front badge, all machines have this label. Next up, we have the two serial ports. These are standard RS232 interface. Port 1 is using the normal configuration, while port 2 is configured for use with an external terminal. The last port is the parallel port for uh, Centronic style printers. The cable emerging from under the cover is an extension to the floppy disk interface cable. This enables me to use a floppy disk emulator as a secondary disk drive, something which is very useful if you want to transfer files from a modern computer to the Tiki 100. To get under the hood, first you have to unscrew some screws on the metal base plate. Then the top cover comes off just like this. Here you can see the disk drives and the power supply. The floppy disk drive is a 5 and a quarter inch drive using a typical Shighart interface. Over on the other side, you have what used to be a hard drive. The original drive broke with a terrible disk crash and I had to replace it with an emulator. The emulator is designed by David Gesvain and right now it's set up to replicate the old drive exactly. If you want to know more about the emulator, please visit the link in the description. Then there is the power supply. Not all models got this kind of switching power supply, 
and many of the earlier machines actually had a linear power supply instead. The machines with the linear power supplies would use the metal backplate as a heatsink, rather than using a fan for cooling. To get to the circuit boards, you will have to remove another two screws, here and there. Then you can lift up the top plate just like a camshaft. And voila! As you can see, I have quite a few expansion cards installed in this machine. The first one is the hard disk expansion, based on the West End Digital WD1010 chip. This expansion provides support for ST506 interface disk drives. Next up is the x86 expansion. This enables the Tiki 100 to run MS-DOS 2.11 and other 16-bit software. It's using an 8088 running at 4 MHz, boot ROM, and 768 kilobyte of RAM. The 8088 usually runs isolated from the rest of the system using its own memory, but it can at any time take over the rest of the system as well. When running 16-bit software, the Z80 on the motherboard will usually be used as an input-output coprocessor. Although providing compatibility with MS-DOS, it's not PC compatible in any way. Then we get to the motherboard. Let's start with the computer side. This is where the main CPU is located, along with all the support chips for interfaces to various devices. You have the main processor, a Zilog Z80 CPU running at 4 MHz, the timer chip, a Zilog CTC, then you have the dual serial port interface, the Zilog Dart chip. Next to it is the parallel port interface, a Zilog PAO chip. Finally, you have the floppy disk controller. This is a Western Digital FD1797 chip. Moving down, you have the 64 kilobyte of system RAM and 8 kilobyte of ROM. The kernel copies itself into RAM on boot, so only 56 kilobyte is available for use by the operating system and other programs. On the other side of the board is the graphics and sound system. You might have noticed there are now dedicated video interface chips here. Almost everything is made up of discrete TTL logic. In the center you got the sound chip, the General Instruments Programmable Sound Generator. It's the same sound chips that was used in the Amstrad color computer and certain models of the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Then you got the 32 kilobytes of video memory, which was quite a lot for the time. This memory stored a bitmap of whatever is displayed on the screen. In order to display 256 colors, the Tiki 100 also has a palette drum. This palette consists of 16 colors, where each of them can be chosen from any of the 256 possible colors. Instead of a dedicated digital to analog converter chip, a resistor ladder is used to produce the analog signals. The Tiki 100 has three system expansion ports and one graphics expansion port. Although graphics expansions were planned, none of them really made it to the market. Now over to the keyboard. The keyboard is a fully mechanical keyboard and as you can see, this particular machine has key switches from Siemens. Although this was planned for all Tiki 100 machines, most of them got the cheaper key switches from Sasse instead. Well, that was all the hardware in this Tiki 100. It's an interesting design, quite capable hardware wise and with a very clean system architecture. Now let's have a look at some software. The Tiki 100 uses an operating system called Tico. This is a clone of CPM and works just like a 56 kilobyte CPM 2.2 system. Now we will have a look at the graphics demonstration program. This program is used to demonstrate the colors on the palettes. Here you can edit 11 out of the 16 palette colors, where you choose from a total of 256 colors. The screen resolution for 16 color palette is 256 by 256. 
Being a clone of CPM, it can of course run most CPM software. However, as most CPM programs are text only, any programs using a graphics has to be custom made for the machine. Next up is a game that came bundled with the machine, Snake. While this machine was in particular designed to run educational programs, there were probably a lot of people that spent time playing this game in the classroom. If you remember from the hardware section, this computer got an x86 expansion. This enables support for MS-DOS, and the TQ100 is then able to run some of the early MS-DOS software. Of course, it is not PC compatible and anything relying on the IBM PC BIOS or hardware architecture will not work as expected. On the other hand, this version of DOS supports more memory than the PC version. Back on the topic of educational programs, the next one up is a test in world geography. This program is more along the lines of what most people who grew up in the 80s associate the Tiki 100 with. Your task is to move the cursor to the capital of the country being asked for. Then you have to name it and quote the number of citizens in the country as a whole. This can be harder than what it sounds like, as the information used is from 1981. When you are done with one country, you are asked for a different country. For the next program I will change the terminal emulator to one using 4T columns. As any other desktop computer at the time, this computer came bundled with BASIC. This version of BASIC is based on, you guessed it, BBC BASIC. Later on they extended it to include the full implementation of Komal as well. Well, that was all for now. So what became of the Tiki 100, you might wonder? Well, it was released in 1984, and a lot of schools bought it, of course. But there was problems ahead. In the desktop computer market, there was not only one, but two elephants in the room. In the business market you had IBM with the IBM PC, which was a 16-bit computer. And in the home computer market you had Commodore 64, which was cheaper. So um, the TK100 was too expensive for the home computer market. And 
being an 8-bit computer with a V80 CPU, it was no longer cutting edge enough for the business market. Basically, it was not an IBM PC clone. To adapt to this, Tiki Data had to make it more and more um, PC compatible. And after a while, only three years in 1987, they switched to exclusively producing uh, PC, uh, IBM PC clones. Um, by then it was too little too late and um, in the early 90s they went out of business and the company was uh, bought. Despite it was used in schools through most of the late 80s in Norway, so um, a lot of Norwegians will recognize the machine and they have grown up using it in school. So um, although it flopped, it still has some uh, impact on the Norwegian culture. That's kind of fascinating. So that's the TT100. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.